Ken Weller here with New Tech Inventors. And today we're going to be looking at uh, putting together a few more ANET printers and doing some electrical work. As you can see, we've put together a few more since our last video. And today we'll uh, put together four more uh, for a total of 14. And right now we'll start assembling number 14. NF-ET4X. Difference between the ET4X and the ET4 is the ET4 comes pretty much assembled. The ET4X, the X stands for extra work because it doesn't come completely assembled. As you can see, there are several pieces here that have to be. put together on this one. Okay, there it is. Okay. Okay, while he's putting this printer together, let me tell you a little bit about the ANET printers that I'm using here. I'm using the ANET ET4, which is a auto-leveling um, printer. And the ET4X, which is not auto leveling. Um, and then there's the ET4 Pro, which is auto leveling and has a little bit more powerful power supply, um, a little more professional printer. The ET4 Pro and the ET4 come practically assembled. You just have a few screws to put together. The ET4X, which we're putting together now, has a, a lot more parts to put together. The one advantage of this is that as we put it together, we're able to get all of our um, alignment done and check for um, good, secure uh, connections and so forth. So there are some advantages to assembling a printer and knowing how everything works and uh, being able to check for yourself as you put it together that everything is uh, put together properly. It looks like he dropped a screw there. Okay, so while we're finishing this up, the next thing we'll be doing is uh, starting some electrical wiring. And we'll just get put this 14th ANET printer on the shelf and start the wiring. Okay, as you can see, now we're installing the electrical breaker panel, which will supply power to all of our printers in this room. And uh, once that hole is cut out the proper size, we'll mount the box, 
uh, knock out the knockouts on the end of it for the electrical wires uh, going in and out of the electrical panel. And then we'll start um, putting in some receptacles. Uh, these receptacles will all be 20 amp receptacles and each one will have its own individual breaker. As I mentioned in my last video, which was how how much power does my 3D printer need, we discussed a little bit about how much power these printers draw. And what you want to allow for on your breaker is the worst case scenario. And on these ANET printers, worst case uh, when we're preheating both the nozzle and the bed, uh, about the maximum current we're going to draw is about 2.2 amps. So 2.2 amps uh, seems like a lot of power, but for every printer to be preheating at the same time is pretty unusual. Normally they are preheating at different intervals. And when they're normally operating, these printers only draw about a half an amp. And that power fluctuates from anywhere from two or three tenths of an amp up to about one and a half amps. And it's switching back and forth as the bed uh, draws power to maintain temperature. Your bed draws more power uh, than the nozzle, about three times more power. And the reason for that is obvious. It's a larger surface that has to maintain a temperature, even though it may only be 60 degrees centigrade, where the nozzle uh, may be 200 degrees. The nozzle's a very small, that heating element is a very small area there that the nozzle's connected to. So um, the bed still draws more amperage. As you can see, we're going along and installing, uh, cutting out the wall, putting in boxes for the wiring of the receptacles for each section of the um, printer shelves. And each one of these circuits will be 20 amps, which is more than enough since the maximum we'll have on each circuit is approximately six printers. And um, again, with the calculations with six printers, you're only drawing a maximum peak power if they all preheated at the same time of about 15 amps, which is very conservative for a 20 amp circuit. So let's wrap it up here. Okay, as you can see, we've been recording for a while, but we've gotten some electrical work done. We got our electrical breaker panel mounted here. We've got a receptacle there. We've got a receptacle there for these six. Receptacle there for these six. Receptacle there for these six. And a receptacle box there for the six. So the next thing we'll be doing is running wire from a home run or a single wire from each one of these receptacles back to this panel uh, for one of the breakers there, 20 amp circuits. So those will all be 20 amp circuits. And uh, that should be able to be enough power to power all the printers, 24 printers on this wall. We'll have uh, 80 amp capacity there and I guarantee you my 24 printers aren't going to uh, pull 80 amps so <clears throat> plenty of power there next we'll be starting after we get this wired up we'll be starting on these center shelves and have to do some more of this wiring to put some uh, special circuits up here in the ceiling 
for the printers we'll have in the middle. So that's it for now. We're going to finish this electrical work before we assemble any more printers. Uh, we've got some Tronic CXY2 Pros here to put together, but we'll put them on hold till we get a little more of this stuff done. Lots of hard work, but we're getting there. Thanks for watching.